Passion Travel is a channel specializing in all things travel street food and subscribe if you like the content. Jollof Rice. A flavorful and spiced rice dish cooked with tomatoes, onions, and various spices. It's a common staple in West Africa. Jollof Rice is a beloved and iconic West African dish that is popular in several countries, including Mali and many other countries in the region. It's a one-pot rice dish cooked with a flavorful blend of spices and typically served with a variety of accompaniments. Each country has its own variation, and jollof rice is a source of national pride and a staple dish for many West African communities. Here's an overview of jollof rice. Ingredients. Rice. Typically long-grain parboiled rice is used, giving the dish a firm texture. Tomatoes. Often blended or stewed tomatoes form the base of the dish, giving it its characteristic color. Onions. Chopped onions are sautéed to build flavor. Peppers. Bell peppers and sometimes hot peppers are commonly used to add depth and spice to the dish. Seasonings. A mix of spices, which can include garlic, ginger, thyme, bay leaves, and other regional favorites. Oil. Palm oil is traditional in some versions, while vegetable oil is used in others. Protein. Optional, but often jollof rice is prepared with chicken, beef, shrimp, or fish. Preparation. Sauté. Onions and peppers are sautéed until softened. Tomato base. Blended or stewed tomatoes are added to create the base of the dish. Seasoning. A mix of spices, including the optional protein, are added for flavor. Rice. The rice is added to the pot, and water or broth is added to cook the rice in the flavorful mixture. Simmer. The dish is simmered until the rice is cooked and has absorbed the flavors of the spices and vegetables. Jollof rice is often served as a main course but can also be enjoyed as a side dish at gatherings, parties, and celebrations. It's a dish that brings people together and is a source of cultural pride in West Africa. The variations between countries and even within regions make it a versatile and ever-enjoyable dish. Brichettes. Grilled skewers of meat, such as beef, chicken, or goat, seasoned with local spices and served with onions and tomatoes. Brichettes, also known as kebabs or skewers, are a popular and delicious street food enjoyed in many countries, including Mali. They consist of small pieces of meat, often marinated and threaded onto skewers, then grilled, roasted, or cooked over an open flame. Brichettes are loved for their flavorful and charred taste, and they are often served with various accompaniments. In Mali, brichettes are a common street food, and they're made using a variety of meats, typically beef, chicken, or goat. Here's an overview of how brochettes are prepared and enjoyed. Ingredients. Meat. Choice cuts of meat are used, often cubed or sliced into bite-sized pieces. Beef, chicken, and goat are common choices. Marinade. A flavorful marinade is prepared, which can include ingredients like garlic, ginger, onions, herbs, spices, and sometimes a touch of acidity from lemon juice or vinegar. The marinade adds depth and enhances the taste of the meat. Vegetables, optional, in some variations, pieces of onions, bell peppers, or other vegetables might be threaded onto the skewers alongside the meat. Preparation. Marinating. The meat is marinated for a period of time, allowing the flavors to penetrate the meat. This step adds tenderness and enhances the taste. Skewering. The marinated meat, and vegetables, if used, is threaded onto skewers. The skewers can be made of metal or bamboo. Grilling. The skewers are grilled over an open flame, on a barbecue, or over hot coals. The grilling process cooks the meat, imparts a smoky flavor, and creates a charred and slightly crispy exterior. Serving. Once cooked, the brochettes are typically served hot. They can be enjoyed on their own or with accompaniments such as flatbreads, rice, plantains, salads, or spicy sauces. Brochettes are a popular choice in Mali for quick and flavorful meals. They're often found in markets, street stalls, and at social gatherings. The combination of well-marinated and grilled meat, sometimes with a touch of smokiness, makes brochettes a beloved street food that captures the essence of Mali's culinary culture. Taigatagania. A popular peanut-based snack made from roasted peanuts, sugar, and sometimes millet or rice. Taigatagania is a traditional Malian snack made from roasted peanuts and sugar, often flavored with vanilla. This flavorful and energy-packed snack is enjoyed by people of all ages in Mali and is commonly found in markets, homes, and street stalls throughout the country. The combination of roasted peanuts, sugar, and the hint of vanilla creates a delightful and satisfying treat. Ingredients. Roasted peanuts. 
Roasting the peanuts enhances their nutty flavor and gives the snack its characteristic taste. Sugar. Sugar is used to sweeten the snack, creating a delicious balance with the roasted peanuts. Vanilla. Optional. Some recipes may include a touch of vanilla extract or vanilla sugar to add an extra layer of flavor. Preparation. Roasting peanuts. The peanuts are typically roasted until they are golden brown and fragrant. This step is crucial to develop the rich nutty taste that defines Taigatagania. Mixing ingredients. The roasted peanuts are mixed with sugar and vanilla, if using. The sugar coats the peanuts, creating a sweet and slightly crunchy outer layer. Forming snacks. The mixture is shaped into small clusters or bite-sized pieces, allowing for convenient snacking. Taigatagania is a popular snack in Mali, especially during festive occasions, gatherings, and as a treat for children. Its high energy content, delicious flavor, and simple preparation make it a cherished part of Malian culinary culture. It's also an example of how local ingredients like peanuts are used to create delightful snacks that bring people together. Masa. A traditional Malian pancake made from millet or corn flour and served with various toppings. Masa is a traditional Malian pancake made from millet or corn flour. It's a simple and versatile dish that's enjoyed as a staple in Mali and other West African countries. Masa is often served as a breakfast item or as a side dish with stews, sauces, or grilled meats. It can also be eaten on its own or with various accompaniments. Ingredients. Millet or corn flour. The choice of flour can vary, with millet being the more traditional option. Water. To form the batter. Salt. For flavor. Preparation. Making the batter. Millet or corn flour is mixed with water and salt to create a thick and smooth batter. The consistency should be similar to that of pancake batter. Cooking. A ladleful of the batter is poured onto a hot, lightly greased griddle or skillet. The batter is spread out to form a thin and round pancake. Flipping. Once the edges of the masa start to firm up and small bubbles appear on the surface, similar to making regular pancakes, the masa is flipped over to cook the other side. It's cooked until both sides are golden brown. Serving. Masa is typically served hot. It can be enjoyed on its own or with various accompaniments, such as honey, jam, yogurt, or spicy sauces, depending on personal preferences. Variations. While the basic masa is made with just flour, water, and salt, there are regional and individual variations. Some recipes might include other ingredients, such as groundnuts, peanuts, or spices, to add flavor and texture. Masa is not only a delicious dish but also an important source of nutrition, particularly in regions where millet is a staple crop. Its simplicity and versatility make it a cherished part of Malian cuisine, and it's often enjoyed as a comforting and satisfying meal, whether as a hearty breakfast or a side dish with lunch or dinner. Bisap. A hibiscus flour drink, usually sweetened with sugar or honey, and enjoyed cold. Bisap, also known as hibiscus tea, or ricelle, is a popular and refreshing beverage made from the dried petals of the hibiscus flour, hibiscus sabdarifa. Bisap is cherished in various West African countries, including Mali, where it's commonly consumed as a flavorful and vibrant drink, especially during hot weather. Ingredients. Dried hibiscus petals. The main ingredient, dried hibiscus petals, gives the drink its characteristic deep red color and tart flavor. Water. Used to steep the hibiscus petals. Sugar. Optional. Some recipes may include sugar or other sweeteners to balance the natural tartness of the hibiscus. Preparation. Boiling. The dried hibiscus petals are typically boiled in water to create an infusion. The boiling process extracts the flavors, colors, and beneficial compounds from the petals. Steeping. After boiling, the mixture is allowed to steep for some time, allowing the hibiscus petals to infuse the water. Straining. Once the steeping is complete, the liquid is strained to remove the hibiscus petals, leaving behind the flavorful hibiscus tea. Sweetening. Optional. If desired, the tea can be sweetened with sugar or another sweetener. The amount of sweetener can be adjusted to taste. Chilling. This app is often served as a chilled or iced beverage, making it particularly refreshing in warm climates. This app is known for its vibrant red color and its tangy, slightly tart flavor. The addition of sweeteners, such as sugar or honey, can balance the tartness and create a harmonious and refreshing taste. Some recipes also add a touch of ginger or other spices for extra flavor complexity. 
In Mali and many other West African countries, this app is not just a popular beverage, but it's also known for its potential health benefits. It's often enjoyed as a thirst quencher and as a common choice during gatherings, festivals, and everyday meals. If you have the opportunity to try Bisap in Mali, it's a delightful way to experience the flavors and cultural traditions of the region while staying cool and refreshed.